Hey there. If you're ready to take your mobile notary and loan signing business to the next level, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Sign and Thrive podcast with Bill Soroka. That's me and friends. Let's go and get it. Hey everyone, as you're going out and getting it, remember that time is money. If you want to save 15 minutes per appointment and still stay in compliance and best practice standards for your notary journal, check out the Notary e-journal by Jurat Inc. It's designed to help improve your workflow and efficiency, and it allows you to capture signatures and fingerprints digitally right on your phone or tablet. This is the journal of the future. If you're ready to save time, money, and wow your customers, try the Notary e-journal for just $1 at notarycoach.com forward slash e-journal. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to introduce you to my guest today, Vanessa Terry, founder of Notary to Notary and I Notarize. Hey, Vanessa. Welcome. Hi, Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm really excited. This is going to be fun. Excited to have you here. Thank you. Been looking forward to this for a few weeks, maybe even a couple months now, I think, when we initially started doing it. In fact, I think our collaboration talk may have started last October. I think so. It was a while yeah. ago. It was a while, was a while ago. At the NNA conference. And I was like, hey! So, okay, we got to get this done. We got to get this yeah, done. Yeah, let's get it done. I think that's the super uh, superpower of those types of live events exactly. is it allows us to see each other in person after interacting online uh, for so long uh, and then just make, get some stuff done and some real collaboration. So I'm really excited about this guys. And what we're talking about is 10 ways to pivot or enhance your mobile notary and loan signing business right now. We're, our industry is in a period of flux. Some people are nervous and worried about where things are going. And then there's, and Vanessa, and I'm sure you've seen this too, because you're one of them. There's this other side yep. of the notary business that is booming right now. It's expanding. In fact, I talked to some notaries who have had their best months ever, like this month. It's happening right now. And it's not necessarily real estate involved or related, but um, in some cases, it actually is, depending on the market city. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, guys. We've got uh, 10 awesome ways to do that. Plus, we actually have 13 awesome ways to do that. we got three bonuses for you, too. And hopefully, Vanessa or I, who have a reputation for talking a lot, <laughs> <laughs> we do. We can, can deliver this information uh, uh, quickly for you. But we want to make sure that we get this all out to you first. Vanessa, as I just mentioned, is one of those expanding notaries right now. So Vanessa, uh, we're going to share that story about what you're doing right now, but tell us how you even, what's your origin story as a notary? How did you find this business? Google. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, mean, I Google everything, I, I, everything. And uh, in 2014, I recently had my daughter and I wanted to find something that I could do that was like work from home or like flexible time so I could be with her. And I found a bunch of things that I just dibble dabbled in. And honestly, I thought notary was going to be like a little side, nothing. Like I did, had no idea it would become this huge thing. And, you know, I did my application, started my Google business page right out the gate. And it just kind of took off and, you know, just grew. Like within a year, I was already a loan signing agent and I was just killing it, killing it. And um, in 2016, I quit my job and I went full time, totally doing it. So I was doing general notary work and loan closing um, all day, all day. And I was like, so people say, you know how they say you get addicted to it? I was addicted to it. Like, mm -hmm. it's totally like, get that. You do, because it's like, especially when you're used to working, you know, like regular, you know, jobs and, you know, with hourly pay. It's different when you can set your own pay and it's just like, oh, I can go back out and get another hundred dollars. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> it's like, so it definitely became addicting to me. Um, and so that was my journey. 2016, I went full time. Um, I started showing friends and family how I was doing it because people would ask, oh, how are you doing this as a notary? Like, how is notary making, how are you making money as a notary? It makes no sense. Doesn't your bank do it for free, right? <laughs> and then right. I'll have to say, you know, no, let me show you. So I was teaching friends and family. For the record, everyone in my family is a notary now. 
Um, and <laughs> so one of them told me, like, you should do a course or do a training. And that's when Notary to Notary was born. That's when I said, okay. And it started off small. It was just like an online little group thing. And then I do like little in-person trainings. And then it just grew into this massively, you know, nationwide training program um, where we're training across the country now and like just everywhere, all over the place. It was all over the place. And um, then came a different, a a few other ventures, um, my signing service, and then the new e-notary platform, iNotarize, came out of it. And now... The Notary Business Center. So I'm really excited about this. And it's more, yeah, yeah this is like, and it kind of came, I'm, I don't even know, I honestly I get all my IDs in the shower. I was in the shower and I all, <laughs> I do, I all in the shower. Me too. So, really? You oh my God. Find that. Yeah, I had heard this. What's your science that you've heard? The science is like when you're in the shower, your brain is like, it's basically like, like your body is in a calm state. And it's like, we're, it's, and especially in our environment now, it's the only time where you're really allowed to not be thinking and like actively thinking. And so when you're not actively thinking and your brain is allowed to just be creative, a lot of people get their, their best ideas in the shower because now your brain is just like free to maneuver and like, oh, let's see what's out there. Yeah. I love this so much. You know that I get my ideas in the shower because it does. It frees up. And there's no phones. There's no distractions. And there's no phones. And there's exactly. No phones. But one of the one of the inventions I did, and I'm just going to do a quick sidebar. We'll come back to this because it's <laughs> awesome. But one of my invention ideas, and I've still got this. I still own the domain. Right before we get we started the recording, I told you. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, if I get an idea, I'm buying the domain right right now. So I own showerpen.com because I was going to invent a Bluetooth <gasps> pen that you that's, could write. That's amazing. And it will Bluetooth record your strokes that you write on the wall of the shower or whatever. So it will record it to your computer and then you can not forget. You don't have to forget your ideas. Cause that is an amazing idea that now I thought so too. You know, the engineer I hired to, um, uh, plan it out for me. Said this is a stupid idea. Nobody's ever going to buy this. It won't work. Well, so I kind of put it. My engineer that I hired. Engineer. So tell him and get out of here. He's fired. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a great idea. Uh, I just put it on the back burner. But I, I, I love that, and I think a lot of people get their ideas in the shower. So we'll go back. Tell us your great idea okay, that you got in the shower. That's a great idea. You should do that. I would buy it. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. So. I was thinking because a lot of notaries always ask, you know, can we come in in person and train? And then also they needed that virtual address situation. So I think, no, we need a brick and mortar. And then from that one idea, I said, okay, let's get an office space. And it literally was just to have like small trainings and to offer virtual addresses. But then I brought it to my team and my team was like, oh, we should do co-working and we should do this and we should offer this. And I was like, okay. And so from there, the notary business center was born and um, we opened um, the beginning of this month, beginning of July. And uh, basically people come in and, and it, you don't have to be just notaries to come in because it's a co-working space, but typically notaries are going to come. And we have trainings here. We have space that they can work in, you know, um, that they can bring in the co-working spaces, private offices too. We have a podcast video recording room for all my social media notaries out there. Okay. You can go in there and do all your content in there too. And then we also do notary. So when people come in, you know, for loan closings, they can come in here, you know, they need anything. So we have a, a wide array of services that we offer as notaries too for the general public to come in and get documents notarized. So it's a lot and we're definitely expanding. That's the thing too. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, I am. So, when you told me you were doing this, I got so excited because I've, this has been noodling around in my brain a little bit too. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if we had this? And I, then I, I rented some co-working space and I'm like, this would be a lot more fun if it was notaries here, you know, if we were doing <laughs> right. And then I just never got around to it. I'm like, Oh, the logistics of that. And I'm like figuring it out. And then you just take it and run with it. I can't, I'm going to be watching this closely. I love this idea. And so you're expanding your own business. You've expanded into the NBC, the Notary Business Center. Yes. And even that is expanding. Is that what you were just alluded to? Yes. You so, mean you're going to have more than one location? Yes. So I'm, we're giving, I have to slow myself. So Kendra's my marketing director. She always is like, when I bring ideas, Vanessa, stop. Wait a minute. 
<laughs> they're great. And it's, it's, I'm a, a very like all over the place, yeah. high energy, and I have lots of ideas, but she's very organized. And so she takes those ideas and she puts them on a calendar. And so she's like, okay, those are great. But let's put it on the calendar. Okay. <laughs> and so I'm like, we should open one in Dallas. And we should go to Florida. We should go to Atlanta. She's like, okay. And we can do those things. But first, <laughs> we're going to get this location done first. And right. so I'm thinking by the end of the year, I want to have a new location open. But, you know, I kind of got to let Kendra do her thing. Because I do know organization and having those systems are super duper important. And it's good to have a balance between the high energy idea person that's running crazy and the organized person that has like meetings and tabs for everything. You know, you got to, that is a really great tandem relationship to have in your business partner for sure. Exactly. Uh, I, I think you uh, lucked out on that one. I might need to get me one of those. To- <laughs> I'm telling you, she helps me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I get uh, ideas almost every day in the shower. I'm like, oh, we should do this. She's like, I will write it down. Yeah, she's she's like, stop taking showers. <laughs> give me give, give me a week off. <laughs> right? I do. I got a lot of ideas. But I definitely right now we're thinking either Northern Virginia next, Dallas or Atlanta. I'm leaning more towards Dallas. That's where I'm like, ooh, that's a good place to go. But we'll see. Because you like the heat. I do like the heat. I like it hot. So And I'm I'm thinking I'm leaning towards Washington. <laughs> leaning towards Washington. You, you need a West Coast division. Weather, I'm like that 90, 85, 85 and up. I'm good. 85 to 100. Uh, perfect. I'm perfect. Right there. Put me there. Yeah. Well, this is so cool. I can't wait to um, see where you go with it. And uh, I'll probably have to invite you back after the end of this year when you have 10 more locations open up, right? <laughs> Sorry, Kendra. You're with me. You're with me. We need the 10. We need the 10. Let her know. Let her hear this. See? Right. 10. She doesn't need to listen. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm curious. So I, I, as I hear you speak, I, I can tell I, I resonate with you really well, especially with your enthusiasm and your number of ideas. Are you familiar at all with the Enneagram? The Enneagram? Have heard, yeah. Have you heard of the Enneagram yet? No. Do you like personality classification? I do. System? All right. You got to check out the Enneagram. Go to lindafrizee.com. Okay. And then just take a gander at number seven. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> Is that me? That, that's me. And I think that might be you. I, you know, it reminds me. I've done the disc assessment. Have you seen? Yeah. I've done that. And it has me as a high D. Okay. So yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm a little. I'm a high ID, so I'm like right on the line there. So. Yeah, so you know you got that balance. I'm just <laughs> out there. I'm just. Uh, all right. Well, we'll check that out. Guys, thank you so much. For, I'm so glad that I got to introduce you to Vanessa. Now we've got a really uh, important conversation that we're going to kick off here too about the 10 ways to pivot or enhance your mobile notary and loan signing business right now. So uh, Vanessa, I know this is a, a, a topic that you talk about a lot in your, uh, as you teach and as you travel the country speaking as well. So we're going to kick this off, guys, with five ways that are basically some additional income streams that you can either blend into your notary business. Because remember, under our notary umbrella, guys, there's so many cool ways to add additional services and additional revenue. So we're going to talk about five ways to do that. And then we're going to talk about five ways to essentially cultivate your current network. Uh, Because I believe, and Vanessa, you tell me if you agree, but I believe that we probably already know exactly who we need to know to really blow our business out and make it whatever we dream it to be. I agree. And if you don't necessarily know that person, I guarantee you somebody in your network knows that person. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about growing relationships. So Vanessa, what's our first way to pivot the business it is a pastille that's yeah. the first one and that's i think people have been seeing that word all over the place when i first saw it i had no idea what it was i thought it was like what is that it's still over here like i was I just so confused and it it sounds really confusing but it's not as confusing as it sounds um have you have you done our pastilles 
Uh, I have not done one yet. I took Judy Lawrence's training uh, to be the yeah I know to be the apostate agent. In fact, uh, she's starting with our uh, notary business builder program today. We're recording uh, today in July. I know we're super excited, but uh, I was the same way. In fact, I tell Judy, I was like Judy, you know, eighteen months ago, nobody knew what an apostate agent was until she's. I mean, she went gangbusters with this, and now there's multiple trainers across the country teaching the apostate agent opportunity. So Vanessa, in your definition, what is an apostate agent? So it's basically, and it's, it's really cool because you actually don't have to be a notary to do this, but typically it's one of those things that typically notaries do. And really you are like the, for lack of better words, like basically the courier. You're taking that to the, the apost, when you get something apostate, it's basically verifying it for use in another country. So it could be like a birth certificate or a um, power of attorney, whatever the case is, that was actually an American document. And you get some typically it's notarized and then you get it apostilled by your secretary of state or whoever that body is for your state. And then you ship it to that country or back to the client who then ship it to that country. So you're really the only thing that you have to do technically is notarize it if it has to be notarized, which typically it does. And then giving it to your um, apostille body so for Virginia's secretary of state. And then they give it back to you, give it back to the client. So it's really yeah. easy. It's really simple. And really the person that's requesting it could do it, but it's like, you could also, you know, do an oil change on your car, but you don't do that. You just get someone else to do it for you. And most people just don't want to know. They're like, oh, I don't want to know how, can you do it for me? <laughs> and they're like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do it for you. Well, that's the, I think the um, beautiful opportunity that we have in the convenience economy. Like many of these states spell it right out to do your apostille. Here's what you do this, this, and this. And and then people are like, I can't, I just can't deal with this. I don't understand. They use jargon that the layperson isn't going to know anyway. So that's what you are as an apostille agent is essentially a facilitator. You're, you're taking the client by the hand. And you're just going to guide them through the process or just do the process for them, communicate. I think it's real important to get training, good training on this because there are some variables. And if you mess up on an apostille, it can really complicate somebody's life because nobody calls you. Very rarely do you do I hear people saying, oh, I'm going to need an apostille in 12 months. Can you start getting ready for it? Right there. It's usually like, oh, crap, we're leaving next week and we need these documents apostille. Right. Yeah. So you've got to learn how to do it right. And then you have the Hague countries and the non Hague yeah. countries. Intricacies. intricacies. And that's why I highly value. Uh, good training. That's why I love Judy's. I learned so much from her book and from that course. But the um, the the one point that Judy really drives home, I think it's probably her most common question, and, and you might hear this too, is uh, I called my secretary of the state. They said I can't do apostes. And I think that's really important for uh, if you're listening to this now to understand is that you don't do apostes. The secretary of state is, or the governing body in your state is the only person who can actually do the apostille. You are just facilitating the process for the customer. Exactly. Exactly. All right. I love that opportunity. Oh, the other reason I love it is it's unregulated. So you, the market fees are the market fees. Whatever you want to charge. What's that? Yeah. Don't go crazy. I'll ask $2,000 right out the gate. Like, Let's not, let's not do that. Okay. Yeah. And you can do some research and see what other uh, apostille agents are changing. There's companies that do this too. So you can get a feel for what people are used to paying in your market area and then uh, charge appropriately for that. Exactly. But I like apostille. I think it's good. Now, so you do this yourself in, you're in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We do that. Excellent. Do you, is this a, a, a decent revenue stream for your business right now? It, I can, to be honest, I get so many, like, like for example, Anastasia gets way more calls than I do. I'm like, what are you, how are you getting more calls from me than I am? But she's right beside a military base and okay. all the military people call her. And I'm like, and I have a military base. I think I need to just market more to them, but I do get calls, but she gets calls like every week. Like, she, nice. like oh, I need these, need these, need these. <laughs> I need them. But yeah, so if you can market, especially if you're by a military base. Yeah. yeah Any, anywhere you have a congregation of people who are traveling internationally or living internationally on a regular basis, I think that's a goldmine. Military, 
Um, I've noticed um, some hospitals that hire international medical students or medical graduates. Oh, yeah. Um, universities, those uh, international law attorneys, immigration attorneys and things like that. Often. There you go. That's yeah. another red one. Uh, great, great topic. Okay, let's take a look now. Let's move down the line to general or specialty notary work. Yeah, and I like how everyone's saying now specialty notary work. I have to, I want to start changing my verbiage to that. I always say general notary work. That's okay. Specialty notary work. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, love I remember when Laura Buer first used that word, specialty notary work. And I think that was two or three years ago. Again, I bought the domain. I was like, Laura, that's brilliant. I'm doing specialty notary work.com. I bought it. I have it. Yeah, uh, and, the domain. <laughs> and it points it. to, it points to Laura Buer's, uh, her training and replay library because, uh, she's again, super knowledgeable about this stuff. And this sounds like you adopted general notary work, specialty notary work really early in your business. That's all I did when I first started. That's it. No kidding. That's it. Because I didn't know about, and that's, everyone always asks me, did I take a training? I honest, I didn't, but it also took me a lot longer to learn. So yeah, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes not taking training, but I just, I started off with general notary work. That was it. And then it took me like a year, almost a year to get into loan signing. Wow. Yeah. All but right. I still love general notary work. That's still like one of my, my babies because you get paid the same day. And it's really easy to do. <laughs> I totally agree. You know, I've, I've really started getting into the estate planning documents. I love living trust appointments uh, because there's a little less nonsense with signing companies and print, no printing. No printing. Um, kind of lo- a large packages still, but I don't have to print them. People are super cool. They're excited because I'm basically delivering peace of mind to them, exactly. knowing that their uh, affairs are in order. So I'm really enjoying those. And it's lucrative. Um, out here in Arizona, I've been finding attorneys. I'm really work cultivating relationships with the higher end attorneys that cater to the deck of millionaires. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're, um, they're used to paying that two fifty to $400 for, um, trust living trust presentations and signature gatherings. So, uh, it's pretty lucrative. I need to get into that space. <laughs> so what, that. what's that? I said, I just put it on my to-do list. Oh, yeah. If yours is anything like mine, it's about three legal pads worth. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much to do. What advice do you have for people who um, want to finally maybe, because here's the reality. A lot of the new notaries came in in the last two years. Yeah. This business was booming. You roll out of bed and suddenly you're making 10 grand a month yeah. because there's the refinances are falling from the trees. Yeah. Now that, that sh- it's shifted, yeah. now it's time to get serious. Now the real work begins. And you know what it's like because you were here with me before the pandemic mm-hmm. when interest rates were going up and down and one little tick and things would slow down and you're like, oh no. And then three months later, everything was fine again. Uh, yeah. But you had to fill in the gaps. So what advice do you have to, for somebody who's like, all right, I'm ready to embrace general notary work? So like, I always say like general notary work is great. People call it filler, but I think you, I know a lot of notaries who do that, just that, like, and just do general notary work. That's it. Like that, they don't even want to do loan closings. Like you said, they don't want to print. So um, I love general notary work and I would tell anybody that wants to get into it. Yes. Google business page. I know you hear it all the time on social media, but it works. It works really well. Um, setting it up, making sure it's live, making sure you put all your pictures and, you know, you put your information in it. And if you're going to, oh my goodness, if you're going to use a Google voice number, make sure it works. Do that. <laughs> you know, step and, one. Yes. yes. And then I'm telling you what I know. Helpful tip. If you're going to use a Google voice number, don't take off that intro prompt that says, I wouldn't say like, thank you for using Google voice or wait while Google voice tries to connect you. Like, People hate that. It sounds spammy and they're going to hang up, right? And that's, I think it's like a screening option. Just take that off, you know, and make sure your your phone number works. Get a website built, put it on your, connect to your Google business page. And if you say, next thing is people going to say, oh, I don't know how to build a website. Go to Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, pay somebody 50 bucks. They'll do it for you. Excuse over and we're done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then just set that up, get some business cards. You know, I network a lot. And that's the thing, too, I think a lot of people think, and it really drives me kind of mad because like I'm a very much a go-getter. And if I'm not seeing results, I'm going to go like 10 times harder. And if you're seeing a, a slow period, okay, documents are always being notarized. 
if you are having a slow period, you need to get out there. You need to take your cards to nursing homes, hospitals, talk to the social workers. You need to, you know, get out there, get get some traction because people know what you're doing. You know, don't just sit back and say, no one's calling. They're calling somebody. It's just not you. <laughs> so we got to figure out how to get you the phone call. But yeah, I love it. I love it. That is uh, excellent advice. This is not a passive business. It may have felt like a passive business the last two years, but this requires a uh, super proactivity uh, in generating those leads. And we'll talk a little more about this uh, optimization and relationships a little later on too. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, um, when I had that reality, like you're, you're saying, like you push, you 10 exit. If you're not getting the results you want, see, I'm an evaluator, right? You're either going to take a look, you're going to step back and say, why am I not getting the results? It's because I'm half-assing it or is it because my strategy isn't working? And when I make that determination, it's usually because I'm half-assing it. So then I, I ramp it up. I'm like, this is what I've got to do. And the affirmation that helped me do that was this. It was someone in this city needs my services. My job today is to find that person. And when I looked at it that way, I'm like, I, I got to find one person that can pay me 400 bucks. Cause that was my goal, right? I was like, I had to make a hundred grand a year, which was $400 a day, five days a week, 50 weeks a year in order to pull myself out of the hole I was in after having 26 business failures. And when I looked when I broke it down like that, I'm like, that could be one transaction, but that could be two transactions. I just got to find one person that needs my services like that. Cause you are absolutely right. Somebody is getting their documents notarized. There's a billion documents a year notarized. They're estimating. Mm-hmm. You just got to get your slice of the pie. And when you said 10x, do you, do you listen to Grant Cardone? <laughs> I used to. Uh, I was like, that's what you said. That's oh, Grant Cardone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. In fact, yeah, I read um, Obsessed. I think Obsessed was probably my favorite book of his. Mm-hmm. And then I don't, uh, I don't follow him as much anymore, but yeah, he helped me get, he helped me get through some stuff for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I like Grant. How about you? I read his, I'm actually in his training program. <laughs> Okay. All right. Great program. Uh, and I read 10X. I read that one. Okay. Um, I keep missing his conferences, but, and it's really, I just, I like being around people who like don't take no for an answer. And it's like, no, nope, don't, there's no, no. How do we keep, how do we get a yes? How do we get a yes? Keep going. Get a yes. Get a yes. And then, you know, thinking when you say like 10X thing, you know, when we think about that, it's like, okay, I can make one call or I can make 10 calls or 50 calls, or I can go to one nursing home or I can go to 10 nursing homes. And I always think too, when you say the, the thing that I think of is something that um, Mark Cuban said, he said, work like there's someone working to take it all away from you. And that is what I think about too. It's like, okay. And I think about when I'm working, you know, is there anyone working harder than me? You know, sometimes you have to remind yourself, but sometimes we can, you know, you know, get comfortable and we don't really put forth as much effort as we possibly can. And so like when you think, kind of remind yourself, like there could be someone working harder than you. Like, where do you want to be? And having those goals and, you know, it kind of makes you do that one more rep, that one more set, that, you know, that extra stop to another hospital, that extra email, the extra call, just to say, okay, I really think I applied what I could today. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day. Yeah. It helps you sleep so much better at night when you know you've done Exactly. What you were, what you told yourself you would do. Number one, that's an integrity, internal integrity, I think is important. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and we do, we get comfortable when we sit on our haunches and you're like, oh, it's all right. Like the last, I I keep going back to the last two years because there are so many of us feeling it right now. Like Mm -hmm. it was so easy to make money in this that we didn't do the back to basics, the foundational pieces. And even though that may be the case, giving yourself some space and grace too, right? Space and grace is my theme for the last couple of years. You don't have to shame yourself into activity. Just realize where you're at and then make a different decision. I like it. I like number, th- it. number three, Vanessa. Field inspections. Awesome. Do you do this as well? So I used to do them a lot. I stopped doing them. But as of recently, as we have this new field inspection training we've been doing. I have been getting back out there. Um, not So field inspections, in my opinion, are a great way to make money. Um, this is more like you can use it as filler or you can use it to fill your whole day. I know lots of notaries who love it. It's not my preference. I've done a few. It's not my, I, don't, I don't do it all day. 
you know, but I think it's a great way if you need to, if you're not getting the work that you're looking to get, fill it with field inspections. And it's, and like, it's one of those things too, you do not have to be a notary to do, but typically notaries do them. Um, and there's lots of companies out there who just pay you to go out and take pictures of buildings or of cars or houses or, you know, record video of the building, you know, and then just submit it. Like insurance companies just always want to make sure the building is actually closed. Can you go take pictures? And it's so simple. It's taking pictures. Now, you want to make sure you have, you know, a good device. I was going to make my, I always talk about Team Apple. And I say, you know, if you have an Android, it would be hard. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop. Everyone gets all sensitive. Well, my Apple people don't get sensitive. But uh, just make sure you take really clear pictures and really clear video. Take more than enough. So then I'm sending you back out there and say, oh, you missed something. Um, and it's, like I said, it's great. And it's a lot of times when you get these field inspection orders, it's flexible. So they'll say, oh, can you just get it done sometime between today and tomorrow? It's not like a set time today to, at, you know, two o'clock, you have to be there. It's usually more flexible so you can fit it, fit it in around like your general notary work or your um, loan closings. So I like That's that. extremely valuable. Mm-hmm. And then you mentioned that you're you recently took a training or do you offer a training on field inspection? We do. So we, we have a training we just started called non-notary work. And it's like different things that you can do that technically you don't have to be a notary for, but notaries typically do them. Just to right. kind of, and we, we started doing that because a lot, of, like we know, the market and everything happening. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, there's no, it's people started losing their mind, like running around like a crazy person. And it was like, okay, calm down. We're going to help you. <laughs> Calm down. So we started doing this and we talk about a lot of things that we're, that we're talking about today, the apostille, you know, the general notary work, the, you know, the field inspections. And it's like, okay, use these things to fill in while you're waiting and, you know, waiting for loan closings to come in. Cause it, it has, like I say, it has been a little bit of a shift with that. So. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I love that you uh, jumped on that kind of training so quick. Uh, on the curve. And I think that's really valuable. So, and people can go to notary to notary.com. You check that out, right? Notary.com. And that is with the numeral two. So notary to notary.com. Beautiful. Uh, the other domain notary to like the, with the word to, I need to go get that. You know, well, I'll make you a good deal on it. Maybe I have. Did you buy it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to check my database. <laughs> I'll hook you up. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. I just was thinking, like, I need to get that. So yeah. people are putting in notary to notary, the word to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the case. Let's talk about number four. <gasps> Ron. Remote, so remote Ron, online notarization. Yes. Ron is my favorite, especially now. Um, I think, so Ron, remote online notarizations, Depending on your state. So prior to COVID, I think only like six or seven states had the ability to do RON, but ever since COVID, the majority of states have it now or and are working on enacting it if they don't currently have it. And uh, for me, I love it because you can do it from home and or wherever you are. So I'm known for, for doing RONs like while I'm out and about, like I could be driving and someone calls me, I'll open my laptop. Okay, hold on. Well, I'll pull over first, guys. Okay. <laughs> Pull over. Step one, pull over. Yep. <laughs> and then I'll do the, I've done, I've done like two while I was waiting for the movies to start. Like I'm in the movie theater. Like, okay, hold on. Let's get it set up. Like as long as, and so I invest into a hotspot. So I have my phone hotspot and then I have another mobile hotspot. Um, if just, cause you never know, you know, and I want to be able to always catch them when they come. Um, and so Ron, I, and I think that what I've seen a lot in the notary space, because and this is just what I've seen the average notary is between like 35 and 65 years old. And so Ron is very tech heavy. And I think a lot of notaries that are, you know, maybe in a generation where technology was not like the main thing that it is like um, intimidating to them. And it's like, wait, I don't understand any of this. What are you talking about? And I completely get that. And I'm trying, like, for me, I feel like, I personally think that Ron's going to be the, it's going to be the thing in, a next, in the next, you know, several years. Like it's going to transition to that space. And I always just tell, you know, notaries like to plan for that. Like, what is your plan? You know, do you, are you going to just go into like, you know, diversifying in different ways? Because eventually I wholeheartedly believe most lenders are going to transition to Ron because it's so much quicker. It's easier. You know, I, I don't know if you've seen a, a reduction, but I've seen reductions in loan applications themselves before 
I was going out and doing loan applications, but now they're getting them done electronically. So like, I don't know if you've seen that, but it's just like, where's all the loan applications? You know, it's all the closings are still here with the loan applications. I've seen a decrease already. And so I wholeheartedly see that transitioning, you know, eventually. So it's like, you just have to plan. You have to see where your market is going, your industry is going, you plan accordingly. I love Ron. That's my baby. Yeah. Well, and it's so much your baby. You're working on a big project. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we are building an e-notary platform. It's called iNotarize. I did get the domain. (laughs) (laughs) It's called iNotarize. And it launches this um, this fall. And so in order to do remote online notarizations, you do have to use an e-notary platform. And there's a lot out there. um, And more are being birthed every day. Um, and so you just want to do your research. I have a book on Amazon too called Do It Yourself for Online Notarizations that gives you like a guide of, you know, how to figure out what platform to use because it can be really, really confusing when it comes to like the fee structure and, you know, what I can use in my state, what I can't use in my state, you know, and all the laws that go into doing it. So it's like, it's for me, I feel like notaries who've been doing notary work for a while, like that, that completely understand notarizations and loan closings. When you go into e-notary, you just have to learn the tech side, just the tech, just the platform. But if you're brand new and you want to go into e-notary, you have to learn everything about notarization first and the platforms and the tech, you know? And so it can be a little, um, what is the word? Overwhelming. Yeah, it can be overwhelming um, with, if you're just going into it brand new, but you can still do it. You absolutely can still do it. It's just, you know, taking the time to, to sit down and learn it. I'm so glad that you brought that up too, though. I think it's so important to know how to be a good notary first Mm -hmm. before you get into that, because the tech support calls are the ones I hear the most about. They're like, oh my gosh, I couldn't get this person KDB. I'd like the KBA. (laughs) KBA, thank you. Uh, And and then their computer wouldn't work. They couldn't turn on their camera. I was trying to walk them through doing all of that. And then on top of that, New notaries are like, oh, I don't even know if I what that certificate is or mm-hmm. what that notarial act is and if it's exactly. legal in my state. So you've got to know all that first. I'm so glad that you said that. Beautiful advice and good luck with inotarize.com. And I'm so happy for you that you beat me to that domain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I did. Not to go <laughs> I'm going to do bellsaroka.com. I do. I do. Oh, man. You better have vanessateri.com too. I That's the personal I brand. Wanted. Okay. I went okay. and got that one. Okay. I, I thought about that. I got that. If, yeah. In fact, anybody listening right now, you should own your name's domain. Mm-hmm. That should you be whatever know. you go by. You never know. And you want to control the narrative. Who knows what you're going to work, where you're going to work, what you're going to do with this business or your next one. So control that branding. I still don't have anything on it, but it's there. Yeah, but you own it. You just go to GoDaddy. For everyone who doesn't know, go to GoDaddy.com, buy your domain, and yeah, put a promo code on it. Retail me not. Get a promo. Put it on there. Yeah. It's, uh, I think you can pick them up for 99 cents if you're, if you're a new customer, I think, or yeah. they may have gone up to two ninety nine. I don't know. Yeah. Unless it's like a high ticket one, like I notarize. <laughs> a <laughs> little pricier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's the other, the one I bought the most I've ever spent on a domain was Godery. I own Godery. Godery. G O T A R Y. Cause that was going to be an idea I had. So I bought the domain. I paid the premium price for it, but okay. I done anything with it. But who knows down the road, something else. Might Godery's be coming. coming live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at number five. I love number five. Wedding officiants. Yeah. So um, in, in some states, as a notary, a few of them, you can actually conduct weddings. But if you're in a state that doesn't allow notaries to do it just by having your notary commission, then you would apply to be a wedding officiant. And the, the, the process is different in every state. Just depends on your state. Um, some, some states require you to be ordained or take an ordination class or uh, it just really depends on your state. But once you find out you can do it, then you can then conduct weddings which is super cool. It's super awesome. And it is. It's so cool to be a part of that level of special day. And guys, if you're wondering if you can do it in your state, the best resource I found was Universal Life Church. So you go to ulc.org and they have a nationwide chart and you can click on it and it will tell you the state requirements for ordination in your state. So you can just see what the rules are. It's usually pretty easy. 
some states are more particular. Is Virginia a little harder to do? One of the states over there. But Virginia, was like, I'm a little better. Um, I think I, I think it's a southern thing, but um, a, it used to be they really wanted you to um, be under a church. Yeah, and you have, yeah, and now they're kind of you know branching out and letting more people come in. But it was very much church at first. You had to be either be a pastor or a reverend or you know have that ordination underneath an established church. But now they've loosened up more, so you don't have to do all that. Awesome. Now, uh, I think there's a couple of different, there's a couple ways to run a business like this, right? Like there's, uh, I talked to Celicia recently, um, down in Florida and she's real, she's got a physical location. She's, she's, um, she just created something called married in a minute and she's married in a minute in Florida. Cause there's a lot of people who just don't want the the longer um, processional, they just want the minimum basics to get the um, get the marriage out of the way. So she has these different packages that fulfill all of that. And then there's some that prefer to do it like uh, Mark Allen Grolo out of Canada, who does the unboring wedding officiant. Mm-hmm. He teaches a system for being like a, a, a the um, an officiant at bigger weddings. And he's got a whole format for it, how to do it and how to be an unboring wedding officiant, which I love. And there's all these different ways to do it in between. It's a, it's an awesome adventure. And I think with the right personality and the right passion, it can be very lucrative as well. And then you get cake. (laughs) (laughs) Say no more. (laughs) That's the silver lining. Wedding cake. Or the main driver. <laughs> <laughs> right. We just want cake and parties. That's all. I just wanted to be a wedding officiant so I can go to parties all day. I'm here for the cake. <laughs> I came for the cake. Okay. Dot com. I got to buy that domain too. Cakethecake.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's actually really catchy. For a wedding officiant, came for the cake.com. That is actually. Give me a minute here. Let me pull up. Go down. <laughs> you trying to beat me to it? <laughs> we gotta go on GoDaddy real quick so you can finish it. <laughs> We're gonna drive the cost to that domain up right now. <laughs> I know, I know. I like that though. All right, guys, that was five ways that you could add additional service or revenue streams to your business model right now. Remember, under the notary umbrella, it's almost limitless what you can actually do, but these are five really popular ways to do that. And now we're going to kind of segue the conversation into uh, five more ways that you can cultivate relationships uh, and get just enhance your current business. Because one thing I learned the hard way is that after meeting people and loan signing appointments or general or specialty notary work appointments, if you're in this business because you love people, you're hitting it off with them really well. Like you're just connecting. And then you might be saying, oh my gosh, we're going to stay in touch. This is so great. You almost have a friend at the end of the appointment, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Life. Life happens. You You get busy. Mm -hmm. You forget to put them in a CRM, a customer relationship manager, you're like, oh, I've got their information in the journal. I'll find it. I'll never forget them. And then three months later, you've seen 300 more people, maybe a thousand more people, and you can't remember them. And then the phones get quiet. They stop ringing and dinging. You're like, oh my gosh, who was that attorney? Who was that investor that I swore I was going to stay in touch with? And then you go through your journal. I'm like, I have no idea. You're going to go through three, two, three journals yeah, looking for those people. That's usually how these things go. Now you get a chance to fix that. You can implement that right away. And there's still people who are fresh in your mind. There's still people, maybe you did keep your CRM. Maybe you have a spreadsheet. Maybe you have a shoebox full of business cards, whatever it is. Now we can continue to cultivate the relationships. And this can be, guys, with your friends, family, associates, colleagues, everybody. I believe you already know everybody you need to know to make this business exactly what you want. So number six and the ways to enhance your business is to first identify your ideal customer. So Vanessa just gave us five different revenue streams. Plus we have loan signing. Some, some of us actually love our loan signing appointments. If you're looking at specialty notary work, maybe you like the living trust appointments. Maybe you want to be a wedding officiant. 
you've got to identify who your ideal customer is. And here, I, this can get super deep when you're identifying your ideal customer, but think about which appointments bring you the most joy or which appointments bring you the most revenue. And that's your starting point. That's how you can help identify who your ideal customer is right now. I like it. Do you have a system for how you um, manage people that you meet? Like, yeah, what's some like rules of thumb that you always do? Yeah, good. Qu- so I did things manually uh, when I was first starting out and figuring all this out. I like to have things out in front of me. It's, it seems like every time I, I if I create an, a computer file. I have to have that tab open on my computer or it's, it's out of my, out of sight, out of mind. I forget about it. Right. I recreate 10 of the same thing. Cause I'm like, Oh, I guess I already did that. <laughs> I have that in front. So I'll have legal pads. And I did this. I had, I wrote everybody I know on legal pads and that's how I started tracking who I was connecting with. That's not funny. very efficient, not very scalable. So then I started tinkering with some of the CRM tools that are out there. Uh, and ultimately, we created our own. We have Tom, the uh, simple CRM for notaries that's involved or included in NBB, and that works really efficiently. But you had to; f- it has to work well on the fly when you're on the road, and that's what I was struggling with. That's why we created Tom. So that's what we're at. We're at there now. I use Kajabi. Uh, f- uh, that's my course platform that helps me communicate with uh, all my students and stuff now. But you've got to have some kind of system that makes it easy to stay in touch and keep yourself top of mind with your ideal customers. Do you think it's possible to like, cause I feel like when you say that, do you feel like it's possible? Like, I feel like this is my opinion. Then you tell me what you think in my world. I feel like I know it's going to be almost impossible for me to stay connected with everybody, but like you just do your best to try do you feel like it's, it's a, a foolproof way to make sure that you never miss a person like you're like no no okay. way there's no way all you can do is do your best right and so there's different there's different ways to do this right there's email sequences that you can send out and deliver value that allows your ideal customers to get to know you like you and trust you because you deliver value and that can just trickle out then you can send broadcast emails that's like hey i had this idea let me just send this out or you have events or trainings and you can send that out or networking meetings like for attorneys and stuff you can do all this stuff no matter what market sector if it's a wedding planners you can do this if it's uh, estate planning attorneys you can do this if you're marketing to notaries because you want to start a training class you can do this kind of stuff but then there's something more too, right? There's a way to make it more personal. And we're going to get to that here in just a second. In fact, why don't we um, do that right now? Yay. And this is cultivating relationships with your current network, right? Because you've got to, there's no, I mean, we're human beings. So there's no way that, especially if you've got a huge audience, which you do, I do. And a lot of people who are in this this relationship-based people business have, it's really difficult to manage on a deeper level, a lot of these relationships, but still you can reach out and connect personally. And that's kind of the key to this. And let's take this down to even just the the notary level. Let's, And I love the estate planning attorney. Let's just say that you're, I'm trying to build a business around estate planning and you've, you've identified them as your ideal customer. You get in their orbit, you know, you start following them on LinkedIn you start connecting via email. Maybe you're doing some pop-ins. You've got them in your network or you're a friend of a friend's, your mom's attorney, you know, whatever it is, you start getting them there. Then you can start reaching out. And every day, if you, if you just reached out to one person, and again, like you said, you can 10X this. When I was at my bottom worst and I had to dig myself out, I was 10X in this stuff. I didn't talk to just one person. I talked to 10 every single day. I sent 10 handwritten notes every single day. I had to dig myself out. So whatever situation you're in, you can scale it back to whatever level you can take on. But let's just say you reach out to one person. It can be a friend, family, cousin, colleague, ideal customer, prospect, past customer, whatever it is. And just reach out and don't overthink it. Send a text message, send an email that just says, hey, I was thinking about you. How are things? I'd love to catch up. Got time for a call, a coffee, or a cocktail. The three C's. Oh, call coffee cocktail. Yeah. 
I like it. Super simple. We don't have to overthink it, right? And then sometimes a conversation happens and sometimes it doesn't. It's okay. You don't have to get down on it. But if you did that every single day, you start building a pipeline of people that you can stay in touch with and keep yourself top of mind and show genuine care for. And who knows what will come up. If you ask them how they can, you can support them in their business, they're probably going to ask how they can support you in your business. And that's how this dynamic happens. On that same note, I think you can send a handwritten note every single day. If you did that, just a thank you note to somebody in your life, congratulations, or just like that text message. Hey, I've been thinking about you. How are you? I would love to catch up. Call me, text me with your phone number. Yeah. And then just sign it. Vanessa, the notary, Bill, the notary. You're giving Super me powerful. <laughs> And I have well, a I didn't sign up for this. Stack. No, I have a stack of cards like right here. I do the handwritten notes. I have a stack that I address to people that I'm going to write to. I started that. I think I, I do the cards anyway, but I'm like, I didn't. I started that probably like last week. And it's like, Vanessa, you can send those cards out. I said, yes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Here we go. <laughs> but one thing I do too, when I think about what you just said, um, I don't know if your phone is like my phone, but I have like a million contacts in my phone. And sometimes I go through and I just scroll like, who are these people? I don't know. But one thing I do, like when I'm driving, if I'm not listening to like podcasts or whatever, I'll just scroll through and pick a random number and I just call, hi. And that's how I try to make sure I'm going through my phone. So I'm not like, you know, just a lot. I love that. Actually, that's random and terrifying for me as an introvert, but that's, uh, (laughs) I love that. what you do? I just wanted to, you know, however we met. And, you know, usually when I put somebody from networking, I'll put like their name, then I put where I met them or like, you know, nice. so I remember who they are. <laughs> like, like, oh yeah, from this, got it. You got some notes in there. Yeah. That's, and that's what I love about a CRM because you can do those, you know, oh, this is Kathy met here and talked about this. And then you're like, okay, because there's no way we can remember all that stuff. Exactly. That's a possible no way. I love that strategy. All right, let's um, look at, uh, I think we're on number eight now. And you mentioned this earlier. So it's uh, dialing in your search engine optimization. Oh, yeah. And I'm so glad that you mentioned Google Business Profile. It's so important. It's free on Google. Uh, And I know we did a survey, Vanessa, just recently asking people uh, if they had uh, a Google Business Profile. Yes, no, or I have no idea. And I was, there's a lot of, I have no idea answers. Hmm. And then there's, uh, there's a lot of people who do have it. Uh, but there was a lot of notaries that don't have Google business profile yet. And then when we asked why technology overwhelm was the number one answer. Yeah. So do you go back to the age, the age thing, the generation thing? Yeah. Yeah, that very well could be. The cool thing about Google Business Profile, though, is that it, you've got to you've got to have it. Number one, if you're going to make it in this business, if you want a business that's going to last, you have to have it. Would Absolutely. you agree? Yeah, and I think that's any business. I think any business right now needs a Google Business, unless it's like a predominantly. I mean, I could see a couple of things that probably wouldn't. And plus, Google doesn't let every single business be on there. But yeah, most businesses, yes, you need one, especially now because. Most people that are looking for something, they're going on Google and they're going to put something near me. Like that's how we find stuff now. You know, we, yes, you have word of mouth and stuff, but typically it's Google or social media. <laughs> so, it's so true. It's so true. That's how they're searching for you. And then the other one, when 93% of consumers use reviews to make buying decisions or hiring decisions, that means hiring service companies like you notaries, that's, that's us. We are service companies then you've got to have reviews. They're making those decisions on that. If you have zero a notary with zero reviews or a notary with 500 reviews, guess who's getting hired? As long as they're five-star or four-star reviews, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, think about that. That's That's when you you Like when you want to go to a restaurant that you've ever been to, you look at the reviews. So we do that for everything. Before you buy anything on Amazon, you look at the stars, right? And it's like, oh, hold on. What's this? Nope, scroll down. Like everyone does that. Everyone does that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm notorious for it. And on the, on the reverse side too, I think we have to keep the win-win cycle going, right? If you use reviews to make buying decisions, I think you should post reviews. I think that's just a, a courtesy that we can do as consumers. So I, put, I make a note to 
always go back and review if I've had a good experience. If I have a bad experience, I talk to the manager first or I see if we can resolve it before I post a negative review. But positive reviews, I try to support those small businesses as much as possible. I do too. I do too. It's definitely that's something to be consciously aware of. Because, you know, we people usually just go for bad. Like, oh, as soon as you go bad, oh my goodness. But you never, like, we have to constantly be aware to say, oh, but this was great. Let me just, you know, let them know. People know this was great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think we all need a little good news. Spread the joy. Now, when it comes, <laughs> when the um, the other thing I wanted to mention about this is that search engine optimization doesn't have to stop with Google Business Profile. It can start there for sure. It should start there, I think. And then you can optimize your website. I'm so glad you brought the website in. Connect it to your Google Business Profile. Find someone on Fiverr or even at notarycoach.com. We have some resources for you. Whatever it takes to get it done. But then get this, even your LinkedIn profile, even your signingagent.com profile, 123 Notary, Notary Cafe, Notary Rotary, everywhere you have an online profile can be optimized with keywords Mm -hmm. that show your passion and your expertise for this business. When all those things link up, Google says, oh, this person definitely has the knowledge, the expertise, or the relevance to this customer we have looking for those services and it's going to help boost your rankings. Exactly. I agree. So we, I mean, we do a lot of SEO, but, uh, you know, that's, I know a lot of it, but you know, there's whole companies that just do SEO. So there's exactly. a whole, that's a whole, you know, forest back there. It's a whole industry just by itself. It is. It's a whole industry all by itself. It definitely yeah. is. But there's some definitely like, if you like, okay, I want to get into it, but I don't really have the money to invest. You can learn a lot on YouTube about yeah. search engine optimization. A lot. That's where I started. And just like little small things, you'd be surprised that will just change, you know, your website and how it comes up on Google and things like that. Like there's a lot of small things you can do. And even if, you know, if you're like, oh, I'm not tech savvy. Well, it's time to learn or <laughs> pay somebody. Like we got to stop saying that. I'm not tech savvy. It's just baby steps. One thing at a time. That is so true. And my friend, Greg Reed, he says, work your strengths and hire your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So don't let it stop you. Don't let it just stop your dream business here. You're here for a reason. You love this business. Find a way around it. Even if you're not the type that wants to figure out technology, there are thousands, millions of people who love that stuff and they're good at it. So you can like on Fiverr, you know, what is jamming you up could actually just be a, a quick little click in a box for the right person and Mm -hmm. and it's not it may not be as much as you think all right let's take a look then at number eight and this is or this will be number nine sorry we got out of order there the um elevating your network so oh and eliminating uh some of the naysayers Mm -hmm. i think we need to talk about eliminating the naysayers first because this is groups ah we'll say that again be aware of facebook groups (laughs) <laughs> yeah. there are some Facebook groups that it might be time to say farewell to mm-hmm. because they will drag you down. And like Vanessa, I love how you were saying um, earlier. It's like, just because one person's phone is r- not ringing doesn't mean the entire industry isn't ringing. It's definitely changed. It's in flux. Nobody's denying that things have changed, but there are people out there thriving right now finding different ways to to work this business and make the dream thrive and survive. Mm -hmm. So, but the ones that get on Facebook are the ones who aren't doing that sometimes. Yeah. They got a little more time on their hands. So, and they're sharing it with the world and you got to be really careful. You have to protect your energy from that. That's so so true. Yeah, that's so true. And I think that like when, when you go into these Facebook groups, you have people who are trying to tell you like, oh, you can't do this because they haven't figured it out yet. And one thing I always tell my students, if there is one successful person in your area, you can do it too. Yep. I need one. Then you can, okay, it's working for them. Period. Yeah. There's a, I love that. Because have you heard the Roger Bannister story? No. In like early 50s, Roger Bannister was the first man to run the mile under four minutes. Mm-hmm. And up until that moment, uh, medical doctor science said it was impossible to run the mile in under four minutes. <clears throat> he ran it, and I think like milliseconds under a minute or, or under four minutes or something. But as soon as he did, 
suddenly runners all over the world were breaking that record. I think he only held that record for like 30 days or 60 days or something. And then suddenly it was no big deal anymore. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs a runner, Roger Bannister in their life just to show what's possible. And if they can do it, you can do it. That's I love that suggestion. Cool. That is super key. And I think that thing that goes into like, you know, being mindful of your circle and who you're hanging around. But I want to share this too, that I thought when you said that, see, I, I fly a lot and you fly a lot, but I was in the um, airport, like not this last time, time before that. And I was walking through the terminal and I just, it just thought this came to me about the Wright brothers and whoever else was involved, the building of the airplane. And around that time, I remember saying like, you know, you're crazy. You can't do this. You can't build this. Like, this is insane. And how are you going to, you going to fly in the sky? What are you a bird? Right. And I thought about that and I was like, these people who are not even here anymore, I have no idea, but they built something that everyone said was impossible. And now it's like this trillion dollar industry. And I'm just looking around the airport, I get all this stuff that had like nail salons in this airport and it's like 30 planes outside. And it's like, people don't even question airplanes anymore. Just get on it. You know, and it's like, you can't listen to people who tell you you can't do something because it's just like, it really just blew my mind. Blew my mind as I'm sitting in the airport. So anything you want to do, do it. Who cares? Just go for it. You shoot the shot. Uh, <laughs> I, I love that you look at the world like that uh, as well. I can I can do it too. Every time I see a skyscraper, I'm like, think of the idea. That, like everything was born an idea. Mm-hmm. Everything that you see around you was just somebody's crazy idea at some point. Architecturally, all the businesses that fill those skyscrapers, the airplanes in the sky. Think about the technology that drives it. All of that was somebody's idea first. Yeah. It's so good. And then I also, my friend, side note, because we're going to side, but we're going to come back in it. My friend just went to Dubai and then I was looking at all these pictures. Like Dubai has these huge, huge buildings. And I'm just like, and it makes me think, like, why don't we have them here? We need people who want to build them here. We got to build buildings here. Like, you know, but it's also about exposure, which goes into like elevating your circle, like putting people in that are around you that are doing these amazing and these great things, because then it's going to inspire you. If you're only talking to people who are like, Oh, negative people, naysayers, and you're not going to have that support. And that like, it's like a, it's like a fire when you're around people who are go-getters and who are like, Oh, you can do this and do that. You know, so important. It is critically important. And I don't think it's fully appreciated until you, uh, reach a certain level of joy or success, whether it's in business or in life, then you start to realize it's like, oh, I I, I need more of that. You meet it, right? You meet people who are uh, lit from the inside and you've got to have more of that. And that's what I think one of the cool things about that 10X crowd that you were talking about with Grant mm-hmm. uh, is those those guys and gals, everybody who's there, they're lit. I mean, they are doing big things uh, in their life. And that's one of the reasons I... I, love, I found that at a Toastmasters meeting here in Phoenix, a six in the morning Toastmasters. I think and, I saw, is it a notary one? Well, we have a notary one that uh, Dan over in Oregon started, but I'm talking even back before oh, when okay. I was just, okay. I was just a, a signing agent by myself, but I knew I needed this. It was networking. It was a powerful networking group. And of course it taught me the skills I need to present documents and to be on video and stuff. Cause I was trying to build up for this. Uh, but the people in that group, they were lit. They came because they had big dreams and they knew they needed to learn those skills to make it happen. So they are all doing cool things, authors and speakers and business owners. It was really cool. You've got to surround yourself. And that's this exactly what we're talking about here in elevating your network. You've got to reduce the time that you spend with energy vampires. Those are the people that... Vampires, I like that. Well, those are the people that suck the life out of a conversation or out of a a meeting. And you'll know these people because when you walk away, you are going to feel exhausted or you're going to be sitting in your mind thinking, what are we talking about? Or why am I here? (laughs) You want people that fill you and don't drain you. And that's super important when you're on your way to doing big things. I like it. Then, um, Remember your ideal customers in this. Get involved with them, guys. Your your ideal customers are probably big dreamers and big doers. They're probably making some stuff happen. Get in their orbit on LinkedIn or Facebook, whatever they've got, get in that orbit. And then this is super important too, is the client getting events, Vanessa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes for notaries, I think, and you probably know this, it's so comfortable. We've got such an awesome and loving community, but... 
we the note so it attracts the notaries. But then if all you do is go to notary events all year yeah. and you don't do client getting events, you, you, you end up struggling. This ends up being harder than you need to be, right? Yeah. We have to push past our comfort zones and actually do client getting events. So what I challenge people to do is just attend five client getting events every single year and then we'll change their business. I like that. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm always networking like this. This new store open is the only time I've ever been in one place this long. And it's just like, I want to get back into the out now, but it's okay. I'm going to stay here. I gave myself to the end of July, but usually at least every day I'm going somewhere. I usually fill up my week. So every day there is a place that I'm going, whether it's a co-working space that I've joined or a membership I'm a part of, or I just find events all over the place. And like I'll, I'll scroll on Facebook. I'm on a lot of like realtor groups and title company groups or like um they'll if you just search like your city like just put in your city and facebook in groups you'll see a bunch of different groups of di- all different types of things and i don't even just and this is just me i don't just attend events that are in my niche i go out to different because you never know what's out there if you don't go you know and one of my best stories is an event that i went like three months ago to a random um dinner. It was like a women's luncheon type thing for, it was celebrating a individual woman that I had no idea who she was. And I went there, I bought a ticket. I went and everyone's like, Oh, how do you know her? And I'm like, I don't know her, (laughs) but I came. And from that event, I met amazing ladies, but I did get a client for my, for my signing service. It was a corporate um, commercial title company. And she was there and, you know, but I only met her because I went outside of where I would have normally went. So I'm like, all oh, I'm always networking, always, always expanding anywhere I can. Yeah, most definitely. I love that uh, philosophy. And I think you just, I mean, you demonstrate what happens when you're out in the arena, when you get out in the arena and you start making things happen, right? That's where the intersections of the right people and opportunities collide with you. It doesn't happen when you're in the, in the grandstands or other sidelines, right? In fact, I don't even think there are sidelines to life. You like to think there are, but that's not how it works. Get in there and start playing the game. I love that. Yeah. Do you have, um, just in your experience, cause you, you know, you coach notaries mm-hmm. all over the country too. So what are a couple of the uh, best networking opportunities that you've heard of? Okay. So I always tell notaries to join a local chamber of commerce. That's my first one. Um, I think that's one that is, I honestly overlooked it for a while. And I think I've been a member of our local one for now, like three years now. Uh, But it's so much good networking in your community. And one thing that I love about it is that there are other business owners in there. And what, what you get from that is most businesses, if not all, have the same operating pieces. We all have marketing. We all have sales. We all have CRMs. We all have website, you know, so you, and a lot of times, yes, you may have a bakery and I have a notary business, but we may both have problems getting on TikTok, right? And there could be a social media person in there, you know, so you, yes, you have different products and services, but you all pretty much are still having the same issues of running a business. And so it allows you to collaborate with more people on top of networking. Cause you know, a lot of times you'll see the lawyers in there and the realtors in there and, you know, and different lenders and banks are typically in there. So yes, you can network like that, but it also you can learn from other business owners, you know, cause you are a business owner. So now you can learn from business owners, you know, that's Absolutely. A good one. yeah. Oh, okay. I think there's so many ways out I don't know. There really are. Yeah. Well, I love that you said, so in every community, there's all kinds of different groups and Facebook I love is a great resource for events. I love meetup.com for the same reason. You can go in there and just search Get on there. Yeah. Check it out. Cause you can find free networking meetings. You know, one of the um, most organized and structured networking groups I've ever seen is BNI business oh, yeah. networking international. Yeah. But, you know, it's so strict. I mean, and it works in so many ways. Obviously, they're all over the uh, all over the world. But there's usually people that either love it or hate it. And the people who don't like it, they usually branch off and they start their own networking meetings that are a little more relaxed and a little less expensive. So you can find those on meetup.com. And then the only other one that I would suggest, and I got this from Cami Corvin, one of our NBB members. Uh, she planted this seed with me and I love it. 
is join if if your ideal customer is attorneys, whether it's estate planning or criminal attorneys, whatever it is, uh, consider joining the local bar association as a non-attorney member. See if that's an option in your community. She has just knocked it out of the park in her area and she sponsored an event and she gets a year of exposure for sponsoring that event. I just think it's a really great idea. I'm doing it. (laughs) Check it out. You know what I did join? Um, on to that effect too, uh, your title, your title association. So like in Virginia, it's the VLTA, um, but every state should have one. So in, in every state, your title offices have to be with that association underneath Alta. Um, and so I joined the VLTA as not an, uh, not a title company, but I just joined. So I get all their emails, I get all their updates, I get all their events. I'm on the, you know, but I'm at, now I have a Rolodex of all the title companies. <laughs> in my yes. Life, in their contact. And now I'm not a cold um contact. I'm a warm contact because I'm in your I'm in your group. So now we're all friends already. Hey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is such a great idea and that's so true. In fact, um ALTA, American Land Title Association, uh they have a group on LinkedIn. That's probably one of the most active that I've ever seen. Like people actually participate in it. But what's really cool about those LinkedIn groups, even the Facebook groups, but LinkedIn in particular, because it's a little easier to contact them. Uh, You can just say, hey, we're in this group together. I've got a question or I'd like to pick your mind or, hey, can I take you to coffee or something like that? That's something that you have in common. It gives you a talking point. Love your strategy there. All right, let's let's get to number 10. Okay. Which is just increasing your customer service levels right now and the value that you bring to the table. And guys, I think this is uh, really important right now because um, over the past couple of years, uh, title companies were in a scramble to find notaries. You know, a lot of notaries just didn't work because of what was going on in the pandemic. Uh, And then some of the notaries were new. So the customer service levels were, let's just call it what it is. They were mediocre at best in some, in in a lot of circles, but title companies and signing companies didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. The volume was so strong that they just had to hire people. That has, uh, it has changed now. Now you see title companies and signing companies taking back the reins, taking back control, and they're putting in quality assurance um, strategies and rules and if you don't, if you're not playing up to par, it's going to be really difficult for you in this business. Because I know some of the title companies in the background, I, I know what they're doing and they want to improve the quality. They're tired of mistakes. Yeah. They're tired of attitude from notaries about when they make a mistake, charging fees, holding documents hostage, showing up to I've appointments in flip flops or jeans. You have heard of that? I've heard, but never seen it actually happen that people hold documents hostage, but I've heard of that. That's insane. And it is crazy. We had two of them. Uh, one in Georgia that forgot the documents in the back seat for five days. And then one in California that demanded an extra $50 before he would drop the uh, packages off. What was his reasoning? No reason. He just wanted a higher fee. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's what we're doing? Really? That did not go very well. Uh, so, and you got to think about it. If you do that enough, you're gonna run out of clients because I'm sure you're not working with him anymore. Like you're done. Oh, that, that was a that's like that's considered a deal breaker. Yeah, absolutely. No, we're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I so, think, you know, yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I was just gonna say, like the uh, knowing uh, other signing company owners, knowing title company VPs across the country, they're running into that same problem too, and the tide has shifted. That power and control that notaries may have thought they once had, they don't have that. So now it comes back to customer service. Still have and Thrive and NBP, they're just amazing. Like these are not the notaries that would be doing that. These are the open, loving, heart driven mm-hmm. notaries that want it. They're here because they want to help people. Sure, can they make some decent money yeah. at the same time? Great, but they're here because they love the people. And these are the notaries that are going to thrive right now. Mm-hmm. And then bringing, exactly. bringing some extra value. And it's the one. That- Say it again. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, no. I was like, it's the ones that really like take the time to provide great customer service that are going to do well. I think that's a piece that a lot of people are getting caught up on 
you know, learning the documents or learning how to complete the notarization, but you also need to learn like customer service and, you know, how to be responsible and on time and not no show. We can, we've been dealing with this no show issue, but it's been getting better. It's gotten a lot better. We've been weeding people out. <laughs> like it's it, all you do is one time. And it's not, it's not to say that, you know, life doesn't happen. It's a difference between no show and canceling, calling oh, to totally. cancel. That's a difference. Yeah. And so, yeah. It's just uh, some people just have to work on that. We have to realize it's not just you. A lot of people that are operating in this closing. Absolutely. Process. And I think having an awareness of that, uh, an awareness of yourself and how you show up and your personal levels of integrity, all of that really matters in this business. And I'm a big proponent of being aware of your emotional wake. And that's knowing how people feel when you walk away or when you leave. Are you pouring into them? Are you enhancing? Are you being that beacon of love and light? Or are you sucking the energy out of those signers? Because that we can be that person too sometimes. If we're not 100% present, if we're thinking about our last appointment or our next appointment and we're not there with them, that can be really draining on the other side. And I always say flip the script, right? Flip it. Uh, if you think the attention should be 80% on the paper and 20% on the people, flip that. 20%, your sharpest mm -hmm. 20% on the paper, 80% on the people, and you will thrive in this business. The other yeah. thing about that is, you know, there's, like Paula Abdul said, there's no traffic in the extra mile. So when you, if you're trying to do, oh, like if that. you're trying to do the same thing that all the other notaries are trying to do right now, with the same levels of service, the same conversation whenever you send an email or you make a phone call, it's going to be hard. You've got to find ways to go the extra mile, find a creative way to bring more value into the relationship or the closing table, whatever it is, however, whoever your ideal customer is, find way, creative ways to bring more value. There is no traffic in that extra mile. There are not, there are people who just don't know how to go the extra mile. This is your gift. If you worked in any business before, right? There's some awesome people in this business. They were amazing in their previous careers. If they bring that forward into this business, they can get really creative with that stuff. I like it. Vanessa, let's talk about the three bonuses. Yay. I'm excited, I'm excited to learn about your first one here because I'm curious about how you do this. The guys, the first, the next bonus opportunity here is monetizing your social media. And it's so fun. Okay, so I feel like social media is like a game right now. And it's really cool because it's always changing. And if they're like, so, and I follow so many, so many different social media, like gurus. And like when you're on social media, the algorithms are always changing. And really social media can be a whole thing all by itself. You know, I'm always telling my kids, like, get on TikTok. Please get on TikTok. Like, you're like, I don't even want to tell their kids get off. I'm telling my kids, can you please get on it? I need you to make content, please, because, because we can monetize it. And my kids, like, they, they like, oh, sometimes. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And to the point where I am so, like, it's mind-blowing to me how, you know, 20 years ago, you know, so you, were, you, were, you couldn't get paid from making a video talking about, I don't know, shoes, right? But people are literally making so much money. I'm not even kidding, Bill, okay? This is guy I follow, and I I only follow him because it, it motivates me to get up, okay? He has a channel on TikTok, and all he does is take raw eggs, okay? So a raw egg, and he peels the the, the shell off slowly, so, you know, underneath the egg shell, there's a membrane. And so people, whenever you go on his channel and he's peeling this egg off, he will have easily 20,000 people watching him peel an egg and they're sending him money because you can pay people on TikTok. They're paying him money. And then once it gets close out, I'm not even kidding. Yesterday I was on it. I just wanted to see. He got into the last little piece of the shell and he was like, all right, I'm going to take it off. But before he take, he was like making it really slow. People were sending a bunch of money. He's like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I'm like, he literally just went to his fridge, got an egg, and is peeling it. And it's making way more money than you can possibly imagine. And people make in like a month, a year from peeling an egg. Okay. And so 
It's insane. He's not the only one. There are people out there doing ridiculous things on social media and getting paid top dollar. Who has time to watch that? (laughs) Well, in my defense, I did watch for like 20 (laughs) minutes. But I watched it because I was so boggled. And it's always boggling to me about how much money they get from being the Yank. And people just sit on there all across the world. And just I wondered how they made money. I didn't realize they uh, like the audience was sending it because they don't have ads yet on TikTok. So I was like, how do they? They don't have ads, but TikTok does pay you. They have a oh creator fund. So TikTok will pay you after you get like 10,000 followers and then a certain amount of watch hours, they do pay you. Um, but a lot of TikTokers make money from that or from people that send you money on lives or from sponsorship ads. So people are like, oh, do a video for me and I'll give you 500 bucks. Those. Um, but I love social media um, because there are a lot of ways to monetize. Like on on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, and on Facebook, um, you can make great money doing that. And it's one of those things, residual income. I, I don't know if you've noticed. I'm sure you have. A lot of notaries now have YouTube channels. And they're putting out lots of content, which is great. Um, and after you get like a certain amount of followers and watch hours, YouTube pays you. Um, and this stuff that you've done one time. So you sit down, you make a video. Now, it's not the easiest thing to do. I mean, you can but record a quick video on your phone. And there's like debates about high quality, low quality, things like that. Should I just do it on my phone? That's a whole other conversation. But you make a video, at least 10 minutes typically, put it on YouTube and you get paid forever from it. You know, as long as people are watching it, you're getting paid for it. You know, and so it's another way to diversify your income. I think YouTube is an easy way. It could be a little bit more technical. Again, you know, learning to make the thumbnails and editing the video. And, you know, those little pieces can be a little technical, which, again, you can learn on YouTube. Um, But also, I think Instagram and TikTok are a really good way to monetize. And they're a lot easier because they're shorter videos. So it's really quick. You know, and Instagram and TikTok, they want that more um, unpolished video. They don't want that clean cut. YouTube really wants that clean cut. Instagram and, and TikTok just wants you to get on there and just start talking, you know, and just, okay, cool. You know, but I love, you know, I just got a check a few, few minutes ago. I saw my notification from YouTube every month. Every month, YouTube just sends me a check no for my kidding. YouTube content. And, yeah. And the key I would say with YouTube is post at least once a day. There's this guy I follow. He makes, no lie, 80000 and up every month on YouTube. But he posts a video every day. But he doesn't record every day. That's the key. He records one day, cuts it all up, really yeah. schedules it. You know, but that's a that's a nice amount of money to make every day. <laughs> that's <laughs> not a bad living. Yeah, eighty grand barely barely straight <laughs> by. On that. Well, and you're seeing that now. A lot of young people are getting on social media, and they're making like they're they're saying right now it's the wave of the new wave of millionaires are the 16, 17, 18, 19, 20s, you know, that's getting on social media. That's pretty amazing. And they're just yeah. killing it. Yeah. yeah. What, what advice would you have for, uh, in the notary community, uh, about the type of content to post? I think that what does really well, people like to see educational content. So, because you do have to know your genre, you have to know your audience, what they want to see. And if you're, if you're creating notary content, you have to, you know, kind of make it for your audience. So our audience typically wants to see training or like information, like tell me how, or like the day in the life of the notary, you know, something that can inspire people to get into the space. And so, you know, quick little two, three minute video. I just had a loan sign. Here's how it went. Never tell personal information. So don't tell clients names. People just have to do it. And don't people, I've seen notaries post like um, client documents and stuff and say, oh, I got paid off of this. no. Don't post pictures of people's private information. Um, if you do a uh, an appointment and you take a picture with a client, always ask them first, can I post this on social media? Don't just assume they're going to say it's okay. Um, you know, but yeah, that's what I think. I think you can yeah. absolutely. And I love that you said know your audience. And that's another key thing that we just talked about a few minutes ago, but know who your ideal customer is. Again, uh, I think our notary community sometimes defaults to talking to notaries, even if they don't have a training program or a book because it's comfortable and it's what's going on. But if you're trying to um, build a relationship with hospital administration staff or high-end uh, attorneys that cater to the ultra-wealthy, they're not necessarily going to care about 
the process to become a notary or a loan signing agent or your E&O insurance or where you went to get your uh, journals, right? They're going to have their own uh, needs. And that's who you want to cater to. Like if you've got a notary program, if you want to help notaries, that's great. And I, I know some people have found a way to, to blend the two. And I think that's even better because there's always a blend. You don't have to compartmentalize everything, but know who your ideal customer is. That's why it's so important to know yeah. who you're talking to and then talk to them. I love that. That's Great true. advice. Just monetize social media. You know, uh, I made the decision uh, early on not to monetize my YouTube channel, but you've got me thinking that maybe. I'm gonna need to well, let me now. tell you uh, why I made that decision though. And this is, you know, I think it's important is if you monetize, okay. like if I allowed monetization on my YouTube channel, guess who advertises on my channel? My biggest competitors. So so they'll watch my video and then a competitor's ad comes on uh, that sells, because I don't sell anything in my, in my uh, videos. So that I just deliver content and value. So I could either start selling in my videos or I could stop monetization. So I, ultimately I stopped monetization. Um, but... I have seen that. Yeah. I've seen that. I think, you know, and I would say my only response to, because I did see that. And I was like, why am I having these ads? And so my response was not to not monetize. My response was, well, I'm going to do ads too. <laughs> so I just made my own ads and I pushed them out. So hopefully when other people have, you know, they have my ads. <laughs> I love it though. I love your uh, philosophy on that. That is that is a great way to do it. And then it and then it goes back and forth. Uh, well, you got me yeah. thinking about switching to monetization too. All right, Let, yeah, let's 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 look at number two then, because this kind of per- blends right into what we're talking about. Because uh, notaries could offer mentorship and classes as well. What's your thoughts on that? So I'm kind of like two-sided with it in that I have a few of my students who've gone on to do trainings too. Um, But I also, and I think that's great, but I also have heard like quote unquote horror stories of people like, oh, I bought this training and I didn't learn anything or this happened, this and a third. And so I'm always, I'm skeptical on both. I'm not skeptical. I'm just, I always tell people um, my rule of thumb is to whenever I get anyone's training or coaching, I always say you can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. So if you have the results that I want, then I'll take your training. I was gonna, I'm was i very much results driven. And I, for me personally, this is my personal thing. I have so many huge goals. I always look for the monster in the industry. Like who's killing it? That's where I'm going. <laughs> because I, I want to be a monster. I don't want to be like a little small fish. I want the monster because I want you, the little small fish, they're still learning. The monster has learned it all. And so I want the monster. It's going to cost more for the monster, but I'm going to shorten my learning curve and I'm going to get there faster with the monster. So that's what I do. But also, I think that it's a great way to, you know, another revenue stream that you can do if you feel confident. Um, if you, let's say you, you, you've been doing it for a while, you understand it, you know, you know everything, you know, you want to start mentoring people. I think it's a great thing to do to help other notaries, you know, get established and, you know, teaching them the ropes and things like that. So that's a great yeah, opportunity. Absolutely. I agree. And I love your perspective on that too. I have just three short pieces of advice for anybody who wants to do that. First, nail it and scale it. And I love what you said uh, about results. Um, I think people try to scale it and start teaching before they've nailed it. You've got to nail it first, figure out this and find your own system too. Because w- one of the reasons I think Sign and Thrive succeeded for me was that I gave a framework. You know, I had my five uh, phases, you know, phase one was this two, three, four, five. So I had a framework for people to take the next step and succeed. And that's what you want to do. Plus I had all my little systems. I, I nailed it first. I found out a way to make a couple hundred grand a year at this before I started teaching it. So then I could say, this is what worked for me. Here's shine the line back light back. And here's what that, if you come at this, uh, without a desperation, like, oh my God, I need to just start making some money. I'm just going to start teaching a course. People are going to see through that. And you might still have the expertise. And that's one of my pieces of advice is don't doubt your expertise. You just have to define your expertise, build the framework. Maybe you found a way to take a specialty notary work call that closes deals for you. And you can teach that that's teachable. That's framework. You can give someone. Maybe you found a way to complete a loan signing efficiently with a journal system. That's a framework that you can build into a training. 
That's the stuff that people need. And that's my last piece of advice is no more fluff training. No more mm-hmm. fluffy over. Oh, what's that? I saw it. I just did that too. Cause I think, I think right now, especially notaries are craving the, 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 the deeper stuff. Like we've got, we've got great experience after the last couple of years. Now we can start the refining process. Now we can start having a deeper conversation. And I think we're also kind of tired of the fluff pieces, which leads us right into self-publishing books. Yay. And you've published books. We both published books. I love it. It's one of my greatest joys ever. What suggestions do you have for people who have a book idea? Uh, Write it. Mm -hmm. That's first. Let's get it written. And I, I, I definitely thought there's, I have so many books, ideas, once again, came to me in the shower that I've written down books that I want to write one day and I haven't written them yet. And I think that once you get the first one out, I think it kind of gets you over that first book jitters. Yeah. And then you can get this. I have two that I actually had to write that are out. Um, and the first one took me, who knows how long, probably like two years to finally like, okay, let's from the time of idea to execution. The second one took me, I think eight months. So I'm thinking I'm, 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 I'm closing that, that, that gap down. But I think that the first step of course is to write it. So write it down. If you have a book idea, get your chapters, like do your outline that for me, that works best. Like I have a book idea and then I figure out what is the message I want the people that read this book to get at the end of the day. I make that my top. Okay. This is what I want them to learn. And for them to get that, what do I have to teach? And then even if you're going to do a teaching book and then I break it down by chapters and then I fill in my chapters and then I find an editor. If you don't have an editor, you can find one on Fiverr. Make sure you have an agreement so they don't take your content, but that's what you do. And then you publish it. And really quickly, so there is a huge debate right now about Amazon KP publishing versus going to, through an outside publisher. Um, you have to do your research on that as far as if you want to use them, if you want to use an outside publisher, if you want to do a self-publishing kind of method. Um, I did. I just stuck with Amazon and I, I used them. I do think one day I will transition away just because of that commission split. But... It was convenient for me. So it's basically you write your book, you make your book cover, you can do it in Canva. You, they have an, a feature on there. You can pay somebody on Fiverr to do it. You upload it to Amazon, go through the little questionnaires, boom, you're published. And then Amazon is going to put it on their website. And when people order it, they're going to make it and ship it and you're done. And that's residual. Yes. I love it. It has been an absolute game changer for, for me from a revenue standpoint and from, uh, expert status standpoint, uh, speaking standpoint, it really opened some doors. And here's my p- take on it is everybody who owns a business should probably write a book. It is, uh, it can act as your business card, uh, on an expertise. The thing is like we just talked about with the courses, you need to find a framework. You need to say something differently than other people are saying it because people are tired of fluff and they're tired of hearing the same thing. So you just got to find a way Again, your own personal experience, your own personal journey, what has worked for you is going to be really valuable. And then the other thing is um, have a launch strategy. Guys, there's a there's a magic, to, not even a magic, there's just a system for the algorithm on Amazon uh, to get reviews and sales in the very beginning that gives you a huge boost in the Amazon uh, algorithm. And if you follow through with that, it actually works. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you want to check out kindlepreneur.com or you want to get dialed in to a course, a self-publishing school that I took with Chandler Bolt that has changed my life completely. And he's given me all the resources to publish these two books, plus I'm publishing three more this year, hopefully if we can do this, but I love your advice. Nothing else matters until you write it. So if you sit down to write a book and you're like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to design the cover first real quick, or I'm going to find an editor. That's just resistance getting in the way, distracting you. Nothing else matters until you write the first draft. Vanessa, this has been a much longer conversation than I, than I just like what we would do, but this has been packed full of, I, I've learned so much from you and I love learning. I'm a lifelong learner. So thank you for sharing that with me and with the rest of our audience. And thank you for making time for us. 
Thank you for having me, Bill. Of course, you know, I love you. You're amazing. I love all of your content and I just love your vibe. So I'm like, I love us being able to connect. Plus you gave, I have a whole page of notes now of things I have to go do. That's your home. Like the, the local bar association. Yeah. Awesome. Today. I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of things I got to do now and add it to my list. That we mm, and got some earlier. domain names to buy. Things. Yeah. Yes, I got to go get this. Um, what did I say? I wrote it down. I came for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Vanessa, your energy is amazing as well. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to, uh, well, collaborating with you even more uh, throughout the year. So thank you again. And you have a great day. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Sign and Thrive podcast for notaries brought to you by the Notary E-Journal. Notaries all over the country, including California, Texas, and Florida, are raving about how efficient this journal makes their appointments. Here's what Paul has to say about the ID scan feature. This is Paul from California. I'm a mobile notary, and I love using the Notary E-Journal because it just saves me so much time. And I don't even need to worry if I'm spelling their name right or if I'm reading their numbers off their IDs wrong. The app scans it for you, and there's no human error here. It just scans it, has the dates already ready for me, and I'm good to go. Thanks, Paul, for that completely spontaneous and unscripted testimonial. This ID scan feature, guys, is a secure way to quickly capture data from an ID without putting your client's information at risk. You've got to see it in action for yourself. Try the Notary eJournal for just $1 and test out the scan feature today at notarycoach.com forward slash eJournal.